Welcome to Maryfield's Gardening Advisor, brought to you by the experts at Maryfield Garden Center. Join us as we discover beautiful plants, new trends, and exciting ideas for your landscape. So let's get growing together. Maryfield's Gardening Advisor, bringing out the best in your garden. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Maryfield's Gardening Advisor. Peggy and I are very glad that you could join us on what looks like it's going to be a beautiful weekend. Yes, I think we're into spring. I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Maybe winter's over now. That's right. <laughs> well, first of all, I have to thank you and Diane for taking over for me last weekend, keeping right. everything you know, wonderful as always, and especially to Diane, who came in at the very last minute. I had caught a virus yeah. and could not, literally could not speak. So, well, thank we you have so to much. deal. That's we right. Deal. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, today we have got um, a great show for you because you are going to tell us about some small plants that have a big impact. Yes, I think that they do. Mm -hmm. I've been playing with hypertufa containers, that's some that we made mm -hmm. for many years, and, and this is, is one of the first. I started with some little ones mm -hmm. and then I got rather large with it, okay? <laughs> And to put these beautiful small plants, the miniature evergreens and the, the even the deciduous little tiny shrubs. There's a, a dwarf form of Cotoneaster, for instance, mm -hmm. and began to add the little fairies. And all this little garden has grown with the years. And it seems to have taken a while, but now it's a big trend. Yes, absolutely. So we're going to talk about that trend today. One of the fantastic things about this type of gardening, gardening in containers and with these miniatures, is that it can also be tabletop gardening. Mm -hmm. For those who can no longer get down on their knees, um, it brings it up to you. And so this is this is our day today. That's right. Yes. You know, it's just I love the way gardening has evolved over the years. You know, right. this type of thing, the you know, container gardening, everything is just constantly changing. Yeah. It is. Yep. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I uh, got a lot to talk about. No phone calls this week. So before we get started, though, want to let you know what's happening at Maryfield Garden Center. We're a little sad because this is the last weekend of our winter spring series of seminars, but we are going out with a bang. <laughs> because today, at, and these are all at the Gainesville location, today at 1.30 p.m. at our Gainesville location, Andre Viette will be here. Uh, Andre's been here every year, and he is yes. just amazing. He's a hybridizer. He's a grower. He's a TV personality. He's a radio personality. He, he knows, lectures all, he lectures over, the world. all over the world. <laughs> He's just yes. amazing. So he is uh, going to be at our Gainesville location at 1.30 today doing a seminar on exciting perennials, and he's doing that in conjunction with Bonide uh, products. And it's going to be fantastic. Yes, I, I do invite all of you to come out and to hear Andre. I know he has quite a following, but, but for those of you who don't know Andre, this is a wonderful experience because he is so incredibly knowledgeable. Oh, he knows perennials. Yes, well, he's been our friend and was our supplier for perennials for years and years, many, years. many yep. years. And, and it's very special to have him Absolutely. there. Yep. Yeah. And the reason that he's there at 1.30 instead of the usual 10 a.m. on Saturdays is because he does every week a radio show uh, in the garden with Andre Viette. And so he's actually doing it from our, our, our Gainesville location today. And Peggy, you're going to, to, going to try, try to scoot out here as quick as you can and be <laughs> yeah, on with it's him. It's a little bit of a road trip to get there <laughs> right. in time. Yep. But he's on from 8 to 11 every yeah. Saturday morning. So he's doing that this morning and then we'll do the seminar in the afternoon. Right. So that will be wonderful. So 1.30 today, I know he brought some, uh, I can't remember what he said he brought, but he did bring some perennials that he's going to do as door prizes, I believe. Uh, perhaps. Yeah. He usually does. Yeah. 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 So great, great way to learn about wonderful perennials. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow, to end the whole series, uh, Paul McLean is going to be talking about growing beautiful roses. You know, roses have evolved so much over the years. You know, they're not so difficult like they used to be. They, it, you know, it, it's a wonderful way of gardening is to grow roses. So he's got some great tips for you to just really enjoy roses in your landscape. So that's at 1 p.m. tomorrow, Sunday, again, at our Gainesville location. And then if you haven't um, 
gotten on our mailing list. You know, these seminars will start up again next fall in September. So now is a good time to, if you haven't gotten on it already, go to our website, maryfieldgardencenter.com, or stop by any of our stores and sign up for our both our regular mailing list mm -hmm. and our email mailing list because our we our email mailing list we send out at least a couple of times a month and it's got great information it's talking about events it's got sometimes it's got some offers so it's a great way to keep in contact and learn more about Maryfield Garden Center so this would be a good reminder to get on there so you're ready when the seminar booklets come out next fall <laughs> and then I also wanted to oh the, before I forget, on this website as well, we've got a lot of plants. I know, especially last week, you had a right. lot of plants you were talking yeah. about with a lot of plant names, and it's difficult to put them up. So on our website, usually by Saturday afternoon, the show is the show that you saw this morning is on our website. Uh, so it's under what's happening and our TV show. And you can see the, the episode, and you can see the outline that we kind of follow, <laughs> try to follow, but it has the listing of everything on there. So just, you know, take advantage of that. And then other, one other quick um, notice to tell you, and I'm sure you mentioned this last week, on, sat on Sundays, we're extending our hours for the next several weeks. So our Sunday hours will be from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., in addition to the Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So you've got plenty of time to come out and shop. <laughs> Yes. So and that's, then get into the garden. <laughs> and then and get into the garden. That's right. So. Right. So yeah. let's get going. Back to the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's let's bring up the next picture. Um, love, just love all of the lists, you know. And so do the neighbors. This is a little garden that's near the road. And so you have the opportunity to walk through it and find little things in secret places. Mm -hmm. But the beauty is these incredible plants. These little fairies are sitting among some of the creepers. Often you'll find them in the perennial section. And they're referred to as jeepers creepers and uh, treadwells and steppables and right. that sort of thing. But there's creeping times. There's wire grass. They all weave together. The times are incredible. They really are such fun. It's like a carpet, I you know. know? It's like the lawn. Again, you don't another have innovation of plants. It's great. <laughs> and so, as we proceed through the show, I'm going to share with you up close some of these wonderful plants mm -hmm. because they're very exciting. Most are very hardy. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take a lot of space. No, and they're fun. I mean, you can That's do right. so much with these smaller plants, especially with the, with the fairies and the miniature garden. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and we come back. I think you're going into our virtual garden, aren't you? Yes, I think oh, you're right. sending me to the virtual I am, garden. I am. We'll be right back. Hi everybody, welcome back to Maryfield's Gardening Advisor. We're talking about miniature gardens, dwarf plants, small container gardening. It's a wide open topic. So I've sent Peggy over into our virtual garden and she's got a lot to share. Peg? Yes, welcome to the virtual garden. Because this, in this manner I can sort of point out some of the plants just a little bit better. Some of the creepers bloom, and like most perennials, it's an off and on kind of thing. They don't bloom all through the season. But this little ground cover is called Pratia, P-R-A-T-I-A, -A, Pratia. And it is a perennial, and it has a long period of bloom. I think it stays in bloom for at least six weeks. And then it's like a little carpet of green. Now, it is an anxious grower, so every now and then you have to control its edges so that it doesn't take over its next door neighbor. But contrasts in these little miniature gardens are just as important as in the larger landscape. And so, beside the little um, house that is here is also a dwarf form of grass. This one happens to be a Carex, but there are several dwarf forms of grasses that can be used. 
And then there's a little tiny Hanoki cypress. Hanoki cypress comes from inches tall to mid-size to really tall. So if you like that plant, which I do, you can use it in so many different ways. But this is a little guy that I've kept very small just by about this time of the year you can shear it even and, and that's wonderful, keeps it nice and dense. And then over on the other side is a wonderful Cotone ester. You can also see the spilling over of one of the Scotch mosses. The Irish moss or the Scotch moss, one is yellow, one is green. Just beautiful. And as we continue to roll through this, I'll show you how. This is in my garden. This one actually was at the uh, Fair Oaks location. And look how they blend together. You can use and get color through plant material itself, not just blossoms. This is a little dwarf campanula, and it will bloom. It has a period of bloom, usually in, in the latter part of June, and may rebloom, but it's a nice, tidy little golden thing that draws your eye to the center. It's sort of a focal area for here. And then that color is repeated by some of the sedums that are also a gold. And again, a little dwarf conifer here that will stay very dwarf, but can also be trimmed. A larger one back here. Some of those that grow larger will definitely need a little pruning at this time of the year, every year, to keep them within bounds. Then again, you've got a carpet that represents grass, perhaps, of the Scotch and Irish mosses there. Wonderful little steps with the stones. And, and, and note how I've used the stones as we go through. The next one, please. This is in a Hypertufa container. That's one that's, that we made up of Portland cement, peat moss, and perhaps either sand, can be perlite. It's not lightweight necessarily, but it's not as heavy as concrete. And it's a very effective look. Now, you don't have to have Hypertufa. You, there's many things that can be used for this. But I have filled this with my soil and then built it up in the center with stones to raise it up, to give it a okay, chance. Pe okay, Peggy, we're gonna, we're gonna take a little, little break. They uh, got a little uh, mic action going on. So we're gonna give Peggy just a second to, uh, to get re-miked uh, re up and she'll be with us in just a second. So hope you have your pen and paper ready because Peggy has a lot of information to give to you throughout the entire morning. And as I mentioned, hopefully she'll be able to go out and you'll hear her on, on Andre's show this morning and uh, watch Andre on Perennials this afternoon at our Gainesville location. So are we ready? Okay, let's see. Let's see if, she're back, if you're back in action. There we go. You ready? Oh dear. Well, last <laughs> week I had a little brief episode because I packed my car full of flowers and somehow or other that just doesn't work out so well, you know? Because I briefly sort of lost my voice, thank goodness it came back quickly, and now I have a mic problem. But you know what? We're going to move on. All right. I'm not sure whether you heard all of that, okay? But I did build up a little wall, which gives it a change of levels. That's interesting in your garden or interesting in the containers. And there's just so many accessories now. Finally, this trend has really taken on. And we're just loaded with these wonderful little things that you can place in this garden. Here again, dwarf evergreens. Here's a little spruce repeated by a sedum that has a gold touch to it. And then one that has a gray touch over here. And in the background, again elevated with a little stones to accent, is creeping time. Little chairs and tables that can make it all really a lot of fun. Let's go to the next one, please. Okay, there we go. Okay, this is not my garden, but I thought it was a fun thing to do. You look, they're primarily um, the terracotta, 
This one is a Hyper Tufa container, but most of these are various sizes of terracotta. And each one contains a different kind of sedum or a different kind of hens and chicks. And it's very, very interesting. By the way, these things have their presence even in the winter time. And over on the other side, a little repetition of a grouping. And then a pathway that is done with stone. And let me give you a quick tip with stone. I have used this for a lot of my pathways. I do not, I, the stone that I like to use actually is the Seminole chips or the little tiny river jacks. The pea gravel will sort of roll with you and it's difficult to push a wheelbarrow through. And so I don't recommend pea gravel for this, but there's a wonderful red stone called Seminole chips and then there's the small river jacks that are perfect for that. I think we have another one coming up. I love to do it in groupings. And this is a grouping beside the driveway. And so I have them staged at different levels in through here with different plants in some of these containers. But there's a certain amount of repetition also. Now this is out within this garden and there's several containers here. In addition to using the stone, I also like wood and, and driftwood is fantastic. I've collected it over the years and it's fun to accessorize with that. But look at the golden sedums and the wonderful grays. You get a lot out of this with just the color in the plant material. Let's move on to the next one, please. Okay, closer view. This is a fairly large container. It's probably two feet wide at least. And it contains a variety of sedums and hens and chicks. And I've allowed it to spill into the edge of the driveway, which isn't asphalt. It is small stones that is, is wonderful over the years and everything loves to grow in it. And so this has spilled out of it and is growing all around it. And it makes me smile when I walk by. I love it, it's beautiful. These sedums do bloom, by the way, and they're very interesting. And we're gonna continue to show you more of the type of plants that are really good for this. We will be back. And back to the virtual garden, and I apologize if my mic wasn't working quite right. You know, those things happen. Okay, we talked a bit about creeping times, about pratia, about some of the wonderful little perennials that you can use, but there is another group of these plants that is just so exciting, and they're often referred to as hens and chicks, and different colors among these two. Look how they play together. This one has a very cobwebbed feel about it. This one is much bolder. And they, they're very interesting, really, because they produce all these little babies now, about this time of the year, that reach out to grow, and then the center dies, and another one takes its place, okay? but. I was talking about stones. There's a fun thing about stones. We at the Garden Center sell a lot of stone, a lot of different kinds of stone. Do a lot of patios, of walls, and that sort of thing. And we have smaller stones in bags, but we also have some breakage from these other things. And so we've placed a collection of all these types of stones for you to use and it's out in our little area where we um, market these plants. But look at the different color even in some of these small stones. 
um, the plants just grow over and around and through and it adds to the interest. Now the next one please. This is primarily different varieties of hens and chicks. And outside of that container, again, is a fun piece of driftwood. You can even see the part of the container next to it. And you can also see that I've used some color here. This is a ceramic container. And really, they've been very effective. They stay out all winter, and I'm very pleased that I, thus far in several years, have never lost one of those uh, nice ceramic, heavy ceramic containers. And the Hyper 2 for winter as well also. But, but look how fun this is. And again, there's some pretty, a little riverlet of stones in here. That's the red Seminole chips. And here are all the babies that are forming. And they will just cascade right out of that container and fall onto the ground next to it and take root and grow. The next one, please. Again, a lot of different types of plants are available. This one is Mesus. Mesus will grow in a fair amount of shade. And over here is a little uh, thrift, wonderful tiny little plant with grassy-like foliage at the bottom and then shoots up these nice flowers and blooms for like two months. And then a very ferny looking little guy here. And a little furniture, okay? Now, here again, you can you can be so creative with these. It's it's a wonderful challenge, really. I've used some willow to make some little loops and define the spaces within this garden. And so I've got little plants growing up over that little willow fence. And then again, the uh, Scotch and Irish moss is so useful. In addition to the really elfin creeping thyme is wonderful. And again, sedums contrasting with the hens and chicks. And a little touch of that pradia. And see, there's stone here too. Next one, please. All right. This is a friend's garden, David Culp. He lives in Pennsylvania. He's been on the show a number of times with us. He has done seminars for us and has written a wonderful, wonderful book. And he loves these containers also. This is a wall, literally, with plants planted within the wall. And then look where he has put all the, at different levels, because it's much more interesting that way. And so you've got all these different plants and all these wonderful containers in a grouping together. And there's something fun going on all the time. There's, there's also non-hardy uh, succulents within this too. And we are stocking a lot of those now and learning to work with them ourselves. I think there's another one here. Okay. One more. Okay. Fun fun with the accessories okay i love the little fairies and we've so many different kinds this one is a wonderful little two-story house that's sitting here and so they're having a conversation about what will they do next in the garden next to them again a hanoki cypress you can see just a little bit of the change of texture of the plant in the Cotone ester also. And I do give that Cotone ester a good little shearing, but it has been in this container for almost 10 years. Now, I do rejuvenate a little bit, and I'm going to do some of that this spring. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in one of the following segments, because we're gonna take a break right now and come back and continue with the how-to and what do you use. everybody welcome back we've come over to this uh, area of our set because we have this gorgeous container garden to show you and it is it's just intriguing I mean there's 
There's this little grasshopper in here. There's an angel or a fairy in here. There's a, a bonsai in here. It's got everything. <laughs> it is fun, and I do want you to realize that these containers can be anything. Mm -hmm. it, it can be a tree stump. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I've done that, too. Right. But this is a wonderful low clay uh, terracotta, yeah. well-fired. It's mm -hmm. Italian. It's well-fired. But but within this, there's a lot of fun. As Debbie and I were saying, this is a little Catoni Esther, but if you could follow my finger, it has been trained like a little bonsai, okay, in here. It's almost like it's making a little letter there. And there's to, a C. <laughs> it's going to bloom. After the bloom, you can give it a very yeah, light shearing mm -hmm. to maintain that. Yes, there that works really mm -hmm. well, better than against my I leopard know. print. <laughs> And to help show it up, really, again, is the Irish moss and uh, the fun little sea thrift, which is down here. A little miniature, but color in that. It's a mm -hmm. golden green. Yes. And I've repeated that here. I've got a piece of wood to the back, yeah, and I can't, can't turn it, but I'm going to pick this little flower. And... It, it's just a little, like a little tiny geranium. Where, the, where yeah, am I? Yeah, right there. Oh, there we go. Oh, there a little <laughs> tiny geranium, and it blooms for a very long period of yeah. time. There you get a little, a little and there's idea of some of the, the driftwood in here, yeah, too. Mm -hmm. I partly buried this little piece of wood, and we have a lot of these pieces of wood. I know at the Fair Oaks location. Mm -hmm. And then here again, that absolutely wonderful little um, dwarf hanoki oh, cypress, yes. which is here. It's, it's just like a little powder puff. Mm -hmm. There you see the little and fairy. There's Get little fairies there. inside mm -hmm. of there, and all with the stones and the stepping stones and so forth. And if the camera can move with me down through this, I wanted to show you something that's very new to us this, this year particularly. And again, it's a trend. Mm -hmm. You know, trends Lots push trends. us into things mm -hmm. that we might not have done before. And all of the things that we've talked about this thus far are hardy perennials in this area. They'll live over winter outside. But now we have added, and we're trying to keep them in a separate area so you won't get confused. We've always had them in the greenhouse, mm -hmm. and they're very interesting. Right. But now we have added succulents that are not hardy. And so I've, I've tried to use some of these in individual containers because they're such a strong mm -hmm. accent. Very oh, great isn't texture. Isn't that on wonderful? This. Wow. Great color, great texture. Mm -hmm. It likewise has babies around the edges, mm -hmm. and it will bloom. And guess what? It it will also grow in a container that is of a size that you can bring in in the winter time, and you can keep these plants growing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get your money's worth with with some yes, of those. Yes, you they do. Just keep expanding. Now, if if you can follow, please, with the camera, I want to show you. I've done this as a grouping. And I've used the color of the plants themselves as a lot of interest. However, annuals are one of those plants. I this leopard print is really <laughs> you're wild ever. <laughs> I've used uh, a lot of these plants together that will bloom off and on from time to time. But annuals are those plants that bloom all summer long. And I've added, again, a very small cascading, looks like a little zinnia, okay? Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful little plant that will complement all of these others mm -hmm. and give you continuous bloom. Is that frog playing a clarinet down? I, I think, <laughs> I think. And as we go through this, look at the textural changes. Mm -hmm. This one is just spectacular. And you know what? I don't even know the names of all these plants now. There's too many. They're all succulents. Mm -hmm. They all do well. I know the culture on it. But I'm learning about some of these plants. They're all tropicals in our area, and the wonderful thing is if you plant them up properly, you can bring them into the house. And I'm going over, if you can follow along with my hand, 
because here again there are three, four, five, six pots actually in this which makes a lovely grouping and staged at different heights. Look at the color that is in wow. that succulent. It is intense. It's absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. And I think very, very interesting. Now, again, in well-fired terracotta, following my hand again over to this particular container, we will come back to, here we, can we come right into here? There, there we, we go. go. Mm -hmm. This, again, are the hardy, hardy succulents. Look at the gray that's in this contrasted with the hens and chicks. And I love that some flow down and some are up Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And this one is a spectacular yellow. There's one in the back that picks up the bronze that is within this particular succulent. Mm -hmm. So I think they're very exciting. Okay, Debbie, we've got about a minute very here. Very carefully, right. I choose when I'm using these things. I'm just going to bring this whole uh, box over oh, here. <laughs> well, see, some of these came out of the greenhouse, mm -hmm. okay? And I am fascinated with this little guy. Wonderful, wonderful little cactus. And it is a focal point. Mm -hmm. I often will do these in a small, and I've wintered over a number of Careful these. Careful of those thorns. Don't they get too winter close to very well. <laughs> this is the only one that, that I really, no, that's not totally true, okay? I've got a couple that have thorns, but mm -hmm. I, I avoid the avoid thorns, them. okay? Yeah. But if you. I ease this around and down, to show you how if you planted this down in this container it would become a focal point. I wouldn't put it in this container but I would put it in one next to it and accessorize but look how interesting that is when you use it here and it will stay within bounds. It's fun. So keep the camera right there and I'm going to swap it out. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Look here's another fun one that could be a part of this. Just a really interesting texture that's mm -hmm. on there. Yeah. Well, I think everybody Just should have an aloe of very, some kind in their house. Very, very exciting. Yes, and if you do come back to Debbie, mm -hmm. she's who's patiently holding Whoop. this container. Yep. You can see a Be couple of things. Yep. With I know. I'm <laughs> you get stuck. <laughs> Getting that stuck. Let, let me hold yep. it. You pick the... Okay. Uh, yeah. There we go. I mean, they're just so great for... I, I use them for burns. So... Yes. I, I like to keep one on the windowsill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're easy to overwinter, right. too. So all of these plants are easy to overwinter in the home. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't demand a whole lot of light. They right. need some light. But this is where we're going. And go back to the annuals. This is a plant called Dorotheanthus. Remember that because it is one of the most special plants you'll ever meet. It cascades out of containers, grows in sun, grows in part shade, has a funny little red bloom on it. <laughs> but it's grown more for the foliage. Okay. Dorotheanthus. Right. All right, okay. we're going to take a quick break, and uh, you're going to show us how to put this all together. Yes, that's important. Stay tuned. The little fairies are so sweet. I love them. I love them. Well, we've got a little how-to to share with you now. And Debbie has... All manner I have all of kinds of stones here. here. So if we can focus on her hands, there's there's diff this is a very lightweight stone that comes in bags, and it has great color in it. Just wonderful. Keep your handle there, okay? okay? You're, you you loaded me up here. Okay, put that one back. Okay. <laughs> and move some of this out of the way here. Yeah. But, I'll do it like oh, that. I don't know that you can hold all this. I okay? know, but this is the pea gravel. Mm -hmm. Comes in bags also, and I use it in the bottom of containers. It can be used to top it off. It can be used to work into your soil to help to aerate it permanently. Um, but not for pathways. Mm -hmm. Okay, drop that back in there. Dim, okay, so I'm we don't have a terrible mess here. Yep. I mentioned river gravel, the the river stone. Mm -hmm. I don't know <laughs> if you want to do this. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Little, just, they're they're yeah. very interesting and colorful. They really are. Could be used for the same purpose. 
Now, because these stones are not totally round, you don't slide when you step on it. Mm -hmm. So this is a good stone to put between larger stones or in pathways and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But it's a lovely decorative stone too. It's also a great stone to, to put around mulch your lavenders with mm -hmm. that demand good drainage. Right. And the this, lens, next. this is an all-time favorite of mine. It is what I use for all my pathways. It is red. Um, I don't know whether this is marketed out of the Culpeper area, but it's it's a red stone mm -hmm. that's from out in that area, I think. And it's wonderful to use, again, about, bought by the bag as the decorative mm -hmm. topper for these pots or can be used right. just as you would uh, either the pea gravel or the river. Right, stone. kind of reddish brownish. Okay. This is kind yeah, of brown it's a brown very mm -hmm. natural color. Yes. So, Beautiful. okay, right. we're, we're going to talk about how we do these containers and then we'll talk about the other stones we okay. have in front of you. Select your container, and I have used a small one again, right. the same pot I used actually last week, because I can hold it up. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind that larger containers are much easier to take care of, particularly when you're dealing with annuals, okay? There has to be drainage, or you have a, a water garden, <laughs> right. and that's not what <laughs> you're after here, okay? <laughs> There's landscape fabric that comes in large rolls. We do cut pieces to make it more economical for those of you who want to do containers, so ask out in our annual okay. section. I place that over that hole because that keeps the soil in, keeps some of the little varmints out, right. it's very tidy. Mm -hmm. And then I will probably use the pea gravel, but either of the other can be used if you mm -hmm. buy a bag and want to use it for everything. I put a half an inch of gravel on there. Now, the mix that I use for all of these little gardens mm -hmm. is different than the mix that I would use in a conventional annuals, perennials container. Okay. Mm -hmm. All of these plants require really good drainage. And so in after my stones are in, mm -hmm. I will then put in one part of a good potting mix, whether it's Maryfields or one of the others mm -hmm. that's a good one, Pro Mix is good. I will put in one part of that to one quarter of either sand or usually a sand, okay? okay? Or I will increase the stone. And you can use actually any of these stones, but my preference is permatil, mm -hmm. okay? And that's exploded slate. It's a little less than half of this kind of thing to one part to one part almost, okay, okay? Mm -hmm. not quite. And mix that really, really thoroughly. Then plant in your plants and top it around as you wish, but any of these stones can be used to work in right. through that. And this permatel helps keep some of the varmints out of there too. Well, it does, but mm -hmm. it's, its primary right. function in this container mm -hmm. is drainage. Yep because that's vitally important. Now, I did, and, and I wish I'd had uh, done this yesterday, but I didn't. I have a wonderful handout that can be put on the website Okay, that, that shows you precisely how this is done mm -hmm. and gives you the proportions of, of things that are used. Great. Fertilization's important. These plants don't require a lot of fertilizer, but we go to the naturals for a lot of things, right. and I use these in my conventional containers, but I'm also using them in all of these with the dwarf evergreens mm -hmm. and, and the dwarf plants that I intend to leave in those containers year-round. Right. The organics stay longer. Rock phosphate is not like the other phosphates that washes easily. It's the natural form of rock phosphate 
and it will last for a longer period of time and is necessary inside of here because as I say they're year round I use garden gypsum these are all Espoma products I use the garden gypsum because that is calcium and then there are a lot of micronutrients in the green sand and then there's quite a mixture in plantone and if you're looking for a good all-around organic fertilizer plantone is a good one mm -hmm. a very good one you may want to go to the one called garden tone for your vegetables okay. but I do mix that in before I put my plants in. okay now I am in the process now will be soon anyway of rejuvenating some of these containers and as I take out some of it, I will add a little fresh soil, mm -hmm. but I will add these nutrients again. Back in. Mm -hmm. Or to the ones, the little plants that I don't move, which mm -hmm. I won't move, a lot of the little conifers, the little evergreens, I will work some of that carefully around of them okay. and give them their yearly fertilization. Good. Okay. So that's that's very important. Okay. okay. Great. This yeah. looks like it's a good stopping point for our commercial it's break. It. So okay. we will All do right. that and we'll be right back. We're back. This hour has flown by, <laughs> as always. Um, but we wanted to include something that's a little, little fun here. Yes, we we did this last year, and and it, it was fun, and it is fun. <laughs> and and I do want to say to to a great degree, our Fair Oaks location. We have several people out there just so into this, mm -hmm. you know, that that we have a lot of the accessories. We have a lot of the things that we talked about mm -hmm. today there. Now, there's small amounts of it at both Everywhere. of our other mm -hmm. locations, too, okay? But but the big part at Lion's Share is there, okay. just because and, the interest is And there. I don't think they have the train at the other stores, do No, they? but I'm working on that. We've <laughs> got that at the Oaks. <laughs> yes, this is Romero's Pride and Joy, and it is built up off the ground. It is built with timbers and, and a fantastic job. And it's just a miniature landscape to be enjoyed. And then he added the train to it. That's and the right. trains are his baby. Let's go ahead really. and we can talk over this. Let's let's show the, yes, uh, the train let's footage. Show here. the there actual we go. video. Look at that. Is that fun? <laughs> but but not only is the train fun, but look at the landscape. Mm -hmm. It is just in miniature. And all of the evergreens the love are oh. there mm -hmm. and fun to work with. And look at this little <laughs> girl. We were able to catch her on camera. Aww. But this this is what we have. And, and all three locations should have all of these particular plants. That's the evergreens. Look at the difference. Selection, amazing selection. The contrast of texture and, and height. Some are tall, some are low, some are little buns, you know. Mm -hmm. But but look at the little the little ground cover mm -hmm. things. It's creeping thyme. It's Scotch moss. It's Irish moss. Those are times primarily that you're looking at right there. And a little river, a little and creek. All, yes, uh, Romero created this little on the water waterway through that. it with mm -hmm. a miniature pump. Everything is in miniature. Right. And, and you're only limited by your imagination. Hi, Olivia. And it's <laughs> certainly can, you're welcome to come out and take pictures um, if you want to think, oh, well, how is that done? A picture's worth a thousand words, you know? Mm -hmm. And all the little furniture and the bridges. And uh, I talked to, to Karen and Roseanne, I know at our location, and, and we have a lot of stuff right now, but they're getting a huge shipment in next week, I think, of mm -hmm. other stuff even, because as I said, this trend has finally caught on. I've been doing it for years and, and having such a good time with it. But look how the stones are worked in here. Mm -hmm. And you will find buckets of these stones or there are oh, one of the guys teasingly put in even a little thing of lettuce, can you believe? <laughs> uh, but the sky's the limit mm -hmm. as to what you you want to do with these things. And you don't have to have the train, but oh my, the children do enjoy oh, yeah. this train so it much. It really the, is. The children, regardless of how old you it's are. Like probably about, about 10 feet long, something like that, 12 oh, feet long? Oh, it's longer than is 10 it? feet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think it's at least 15 okay. feet. Okay, yeah. 
but but look, there's sedums, there's golden sedums, there's green sedums, there's bronze sedums, and um, and when they all grow together, they're really special. Mm -hmm. But but look at that, That's all great. the little houses and the little acoras, the little grasses that that are worked into it. Mm -hmm. It's just fun. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> it's absolutely fun. It's just fun. Okay, we've got about two minutes left. Okay. I, I want to show you two quick pictures. Okay. okay. One is the next one that this is effective in the wintertime. I don't want to see that anymore. <laughs> no. I'm tired of that winter. <laughs> Yes, but it's a little too long winter this year. <laughs> but I want you to know that it is, all these things are still effective in the winter time. Absolutely. You don't have this blah landscape. I do love snow. I just okay. I do too. Yeah, we're okay. Let's get away from the snow. <laughs> Let's okay. get away from the snow and we'll show, we another, show you the next season. picture. There we go. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, it's just fun to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Look look at the little fairy who's Aww. saying, oh, what's next? Yeah. What am I going to look at next? There's what's so next? much to see. Yes. That's for sure. Well, thank you so much for sharing all this. This was <laughs> so much fun. And again, you know, stop by any of our stores, but the, the train is at our Fair Oaks location. Yes. Um, so if you wanted to, you know, to see that in action, that is fun. But lots of information. Stop by. Peggy is down in the annual section. Well, the, not today. Not today. I'm going out to be with time. Andre right. Viet today. Right. It's Gainesville, so join us That's there. That's right. Yes. Come and hear Andre. Absolutely. <laughs> lots going on. Uh, next weekend, David will be here. He's going to be talking about yummy herbs and veggies yes. so it's that time of year time it to get is. all of this planted come out to Maryfield Garden Center talk to us enjoy the beauty and let us help you make your garden special okay have a great week bye bye